exactly. There are two aspects of this problem. So one is uh, we like to mechanize our math proofs in machine logic. So we have, we have this machine logic as a logical foundation of K. And we have shown that many, many theories, uh, sorts, types, basic data structures, and all of them can be defined as theories in machine logic. And we can prove properties about them. But uh, for now, we've done a lot of proofs on paper. And now we want a way to be able to mechanize those proofs. And my experience with doing those proofs on paper is that uh, we utilize a lot of notations. Uh, because if you look at the basic you syntax... Mean an, example, an example of notation. For example, negation. Negation. Okay. Right, so that's, you know, if, if you look at the syntax of uh, machine logic, you only see very primitive construct there. For, you know, you have bottom, false, logic false, and indication. That's for both propositional logic. So bottom implies phi, means negation of phi. Yeah, and... But, 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 but you have to use negation of phi, not phi, in proofs. You don't want to use bottom implies phi everywhere. Yeah, so so phi, phi, phi plus bottom, phi plus bottom. Right? Phi, 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 phi. <laughs> but, but I don't want to de sugar notations away. I want to use them as say as is. Yeah. So right. you know, negation, you know, all the propositional connectives as we know it, conjunction, disjunction, equality again it's, a, it's another notation. Yeah. You just define using the define symbol. Yes. All the function notation. Right. You say so that if it's a function. Like say it's plus a function from int into int. That's a notation. That's a notation. For adding um, an axiom. Yeah. Right. For each x there is a y. <laughs> right. Like the f of x equals y. Yeah. Yeah. So that specifies the semantics of f to be of a function. Right? It's yeah. a total function or right. a partial function. Right. Um, and we have binders. So let's say well, I want to define lambda populous dimension logic. Then lambda x e is defined as a notation using the Built-in binder, the existential, existential. Even for all, for all x. Oh, yeah. Notation for exist x. Yeah. Not exist x of not phi. Right. Okay. So I would say all these notations are. And even the proof system, the proof system of particular logic and of matching logic uses for all x. Yeah. So it's not only in proofs that you want to use the notation, but also in the proof system. Right. Right. They're already there. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so you have a syntax of logic, matching logic. Then immediately after that, you want to define notation. Right. And be able to use those notations in formalizing the logic, in the proof rules, in proofs, in theorems, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. But that's not a problem, right? So uh, I, I'm going to use all these notations which are good, and uh, people already use them, like in first logic. And, and, and there is no problem if you do, do proofs on paper. But the problem is if I want to mechanize the proof, that somehow the Let's say the interactive prover, right, for machine logic needs to know how to handle all these notations. Because again, you know, I don't want to de-sugar them. I want to reason about them directly. So that raises the challenge. Provided that you can even de-sugar them <laughs> in all contexts, right? Sometimes you may not even be clear how to de-sugar them, mm -hmm. right? If you are in a meta context, right, uh, where you don't have the exact formula, <laughs> right? Like not, you know, yeah, we can talk about examples right. later, right? But uh, but even if you can de-sugar them, I don't or, want to. Like, or you can de-sugar, or I don't want to de-sugar it, because then the proof will be, you know, huge, uh, larger, and uh, not human readable, and uh, why de-sugar it, right? The whole point of notation is um, is to make things more compact, more human readable, more, sh more syntactic sugar, right, in them. But what? What does it mean for a notation? I think there are two, two things here, right? One is, what does it mean for a notation, for a notation system, to be sound, to be correct? Mm -hmm. okay. And second, how to support them in a mechanized way, yeah. properly, right? Let's go to the first part. Let me give you an example of notation. Suppose that I want you to use the notation f of x equals x plus x. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good notation. Yeah. It's f like double. Right, but I locally double equal with f, f of x, x plus x. Right. Okay? It is a correct notation. I do, yes. Okay, let me give you an example. Suppose that I give you the notation f of x equals f of x. It is a correct notation, a good notation. It is not. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, so in my view, annotation is a way to extend your syntax, right? So now you have more syntactic constructs to yes. use. Yes. And as a result, you have more, let's call it But they're not exactly like the other syntactic constructs, because the other syntactic constructs may have additional properties, may have properties of symbols. Yeah. But these are not really symbols. They're something else. <laughs> they're the, the, the yeah, they, they just add new constructs to the syntax of your logic. Right, they're, 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 they're different from like the signatures. I mean, take, take negation that you mentioned, right? So imagine logic, if sigma is a symbol, sigma of bottom has to be bottom, bottom. Yeah. right? But negation of bottom is top. Is not bottom. Right. Okay. So it's not an ordinary symbol, which is a big problem, a it, big problem. Yeah, it's just a piece of syntax you throw into the logic to extend the, let's call it terms, right? You have, you have more terms, more extra syntax trees, if you put it that way. And uh, an annotation definition basically you say that okay, these new terms that are for in are essentially equivalent to the existing existing terms that I have there. Yeah. So you are really cre uh, creating a, a congruence relation here. And say that all the properties mm -hmm. about these new terms mm -hmm. should be derivable, should be exactly the same as the old terms, you know, mm -hmm. to which they are mm -hmm. equal. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the main property, you know, a sound notation mm -hmm. system should satisfy. You know, every term should be able to be sugar in a, I'm not sure about whether it's a unique, you know, it should have a unique canonical form, but at least it should terminate. And uh, so the desugaring of the notations should provide, if, if I want to apply them, if I want to desugar the notations, I should be able to do it. Yes. In a unique way. Yeah. There should be a property of notation. So it's a, it should be a confluent and terminating Writing system, you put it that way. So, but I, I think at the ground level, which means the core level with respect to the meta level, mm -hmm. <laughs> because notations are defined at the meta level. Right? I say not a phi where phi is any pattern. Right. Right? But then in the real world, when I have not a, f a given phi, it would be a concrete phi. Yes. Like A implies B, right? It's not A implies B or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, the notation is defined at the meta level, but then when I bring it down to the core level, I should be able to eliminate it mm -hmm. in a confident manner. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an important process. Also, in most cases, you should be able to eliminate it at the meta level already. Like, like negation, <laughs> right? Not phi. I should mm -hmm. be able to integrate it to phi and phi spot right away. Do you think all notations can be the sugar at the meta level? Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> then we are getting into a bit of philosophy. That's why we're having this video, right? We, we try to find the exact definition of notations. Right, right. But I think that is still missing. We looked at lots of frameworks. We looked at uh, Coq, for example. You can have a, actually have a keyword called notation in Coq. Mm -hmm. right? Which is good enough in that framework. But not good enough in our framework. Right. <laughs> right? So that's the, that's the quest here. What is the right language? The right Formalization notations. Yeah. Right. So you were saying the meta level. I was saying that uh, you know we, we know that some it's it's a bit debatable. Like uh, I'm thinking of a substitution, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we can argue whether that's a notation or not. But the fact that you know if you have a substitution in a phi bracket psi four x, meaning that I substitute psi four x in phi, that thing you, you cannot eliminate it exactly. at the meta exactly. level. You see that right. example. Yeah. Have met lots of those, right? It's not entirely clear. However, once phi and psi, what we show only phi, once phi becomes concrete, mm -hmm. you know, it's a concrete formula, right? Now you can go ahead and, uh, and, and there's a the right? You can desugar it at the core level, mm -hmm. but at the meta level, you cannot. Actually, this reminds me of a good example, which is the greatest fixed point. Greatest fixed point, yeah. New, new, not new, 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 new x, right? New x phi, which is defined from the this fixed point. Using substitutions, you have a substitution there, yeah. and you cannot eliminate that substitution unless you have a concrete file. Right. Exactly. So that's an example, and that's a super useful practical notation. Oh, use that largest, a lot. Larger six point in coinductive proofs in anything. Right. Yes. You need the larger six point. Yes. You can know. So that's a perfectly valid good notation. Right. right. Nobody wants to define both mu and mu in the language. Define always mu only and say mu is dual. Yeah. Okay. 
And you want to prove all the properties about mu, the greatest fixed point, using yeah. the least fixed point properties and that notation definition. Yes. So one thing that we, that we learned is that notations are defined at <laughs> the meta level. That's why it makes sense to define the notations best. Or alternatively, schematically. <laughs> yeah, you can think of the schema. It's a schema, yeah. I say, or phi or psi is whatever, the them the rule for all phi and psi. Right? So it's kind of uh, meta, yes, <laughs> or, or schematic yeah. definition, yes. yeah, right? Giving me any phi and any psi, when I say or, I mean this thing, yeah. okay, it's the schematic. But schematic can also be nicely defined. I mean, if you want to formalize right, these schematic definitions, these uh, become meta variables, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. automatically happening at the meta level, right? right? We're not formalize a schematic. Definition. Right, okay, so let's try to kind of intuitively come up with a definition of notations. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think a definition of notations, simplistically speaking, could be a theory at the meta level where with the property that when you go down to the core level, okay, any pattern that contains notations symbols at that level, I don't know what to call them, is equal or equivalent, provably equal, to a pattern that doesn't include any notation. Mm -hmm. And probably only one. I think it makes sense to any cell. It, it should be only be one, one. Yeah. but probably that's a consequence of something else. So first of all, actually, maybe that's one property, right? For each pattern with notations, I should have exactly one pattern without notations. One. And property number two, notations should not invalidate your logic. Notations should not introduce inconsistencies in your logic. Okay, if I add a notation, let's say, let's say, suppose that I add the following notation, okay? That um, A equals true. And then another notation, or the same as part of the same notation, because I can have multiple equations for notation, mm -hmm. I say a equals false. Okay. So now I have an inconsistency. I guess that's why we want to have a unique dechevering. Right? You want to be you have, a, have a unique pattern. Right, but I think that uniqueness mm -hmm. can be a consequence of two basic properties. One is I have one dechevering at least. I can eliminate the notation. Mm -hmm. Notations, should I choose to? Notations are eliminatable. Mm -hmm. okay. I can get rid of the notation. And two, I should not introduce inconsistencies in the logic. Because it is okay maybe to have two different dechugerings of a notation, provided that those dechugerings are equal. You see, maybe I have a commutative operation, and in one way I get A times B, the other one I get B times A. Mm -hmm. It's still okay, because I don't invalidate the logic. What you want is two different dechugerings that will. Um, Due to inconsistencies. But we don't know. That's that's the that's the problem. There's a challenge here. Right. What is the right theory of notations? And where they happen? At the meta level, at the core level. The core level must be schematic. Mm -hmm. At the meta level, it's just a normal, ordinary, finite maximization, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is this important? Why do we want to deal with notations? Right? Not only for the round sake. We have a very, very clear object. Which is the key framework. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and <laughs> yeah. so if you look at the K, if you look at the K definitions, mm -hmm. so, so the syntax of K already utilizes a lot of notations. For example, you know, when we write a rewrite rule, you're allowed to write this dot 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 thing to to capture, to match the frame of the computation. So whatever is out there that I look here that doesn't matter in this rewrite, it be matched by the dot 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 thing. And that is a notation. And we like it the front end. But the thing is, right now, what K does is uh, it has a very sophisticated front end called the K compiler, which handles, which has, you know, knows everything about this front end sugar and de sugar them right away and spits out the basic matching logic axioms without using them. Uh, and the backend use those axioms to do proofs and so on, of course. Everything that likes, all the tools rely on that sugaring, which is pretty hardcore. So that means there is a gap from 
the key definition. And you keep finding we, errors actually the way things are. Yeah, but we should actually actually inconsistency <laughs> in this. So, so it's a serious issue. Yeah. Uh, and there's a gap between the formal semantics that we users, right, language designers see in K and the actual mathematical theories that the backend rely on. So there's a gap. And that gap is the K compile tool, which is not formalized. So there's even it's not even possible to talk about verifying that process because I don't even have a formal specification of that yet. So that would allow us to have a semantics of K itself. Yes. So I know of magic logic through notation. Through notation. So basically K should be a way to use machine logic theories and a set of notations that are carefully de designed that suit a need for programming language semantics. Right. So instead of defining K in K, going to the meta level and defining K as a theory in K, but at the meta level, like for example we do with mod, mm -hmm. and people did that with OBJ and many other languages, similar languages. So instead of that, what we envision is that we can define at the meta level only this notation system, which is generic and people can use it for lots of things, right. including for defining K using notations. Yeah. But that definition will then happen at the core level. It would be like, like, a, like a shallow embedding <laughs> if you want, in, of K within matching logic uh, through notations. Oh yeah, it's going to be a shallow embedding. It's yes. going to be a shallow embedding of K in matching logic through notations. Right. And then the compile, the front end of K, would be just uh, dealing with those notations. Right. Right. Some of them you want to desugar, others you don't. Right. Like or you want to keep or you don't want to desugar it. Right. So you use it, larger fixed point, you want to keep it, probably you don't want to be to desugar it. So what, or write the regulation, you want to keep it, you don't want to Oh yeah, the right regulation is uh, it's, it's also a notation. Right. So when we say phi one we write to phi two, that means phi one implies next phi two. So what we're after here is a very generic infrastructure which will, uh, allows us to define any notation we like and to have the K as we know it be defined in such a, using that infrastructure as a set of notations. Itself, what's happening now, which is basically you know, a set of particular notations are hardwired, wired, hardwired yeah. in, in the K compiler tool. Yes. And uh, that actually caused a problem in proof generation. Yeah. Because uh, when we generate proofs, uh, you know, the backend only knows the axioms that the click compiler generates. And it's very difficult for us to guess what kind of axioms are going to be there. Mm -hmm. right? Because this desugaring process <laughs> is it's not formalized. It's, uh, it's, it's something hidden. So how do you think this would relate to notations in Coq? Right? So Coq has this keyword, notation, mm -hmm. and you can define your own notation right, as a typed term right, in, uh, yes. in Coq, um, or AST. Actually, I haven't used it, I confess, so, right. but you, you have. So tell me a bit about that, and why do you think that is not exactly what you need? Because I guess many of our Coq friends, they would say, well, already has that. Why don't you use the same thing? Well, to be honest, I don't really have a very conclusive answer to that. Mm -hmm. But to me, what Coq definition allows me to do is... Uh, Coq uh, notations. Yeah, the notations in Coq. Mm -hmm. Is that they allow me to introduce this mixed mix form syntax, right? So, which are really good. And I think at some point we'd like to have that also in matching logic. We have it in K, by the way. We, we have, have it all in mixed mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have it in K. Right. Which, by the way, all the syntax in K with context-free grammars and so on, all those would be notations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just notation for a non-ordinary symbol, but I like to use that notation. Right. Okay. So but that is so uh, what's a bit uh, special, right, in, in our settings, this, uh, as we discussed, this meta, meta variable mm -hmm. thing, right? So, so it's very often that when, when we do proofs, like for the deduction theorem, it's a proof about at the meta level, right? Decide. For example, if I want to prove the deduction theorem, mm -hmm. I need to do an induction on the length of a proof, or if I want to prove, uh, for example, this uh, equality elimination, yeah. which is another action schema, I have to do structure induction on phi and so on. So it feels to me that this 
interactive theorem prover we're talking about for matching logic needs to have support right, for all these reasoning at the meta level. And uh, this issue with the notations comes you know, with that kind of reasoning. So as we said, if we only want to, if we, you know, if everything is at object level, then I think uh, notation is going to be easy because we can always desugar it right away. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, um, maybe it's very often that we want to keep them as is, at the meta level, and we, we want to reason about them at the meta level. So I think that's what makes it uh, so. Let, let's get back to the deduction, to the deduction theorem. Deduction theorem in matching logic. Can you can you can you remind me the deduction theorem in matching logic? So the deduction theorem says if you have phi as an axiom, and using that you prove psi. Uh, so gamma union phi proves psi, derives psi. Oh yeah, we we have an underlying gamma. Yeah. So gamma union phi derives psi. Uh, if and only if, roughly speaking, using only gamma, you can derive an implication <laughs> where phi is the premise and psi is the conclusion. But you put the city, right? You, you put the city on the premise too, and you, make, you have to really quantify the grid and so on. But essentially, it's making it binary. That, that, that's important. Make it binary. So it must be total. Yeah, it must be total. Right. <clears throat> All right, so we're talking about deduction theorem. Yeah. Where um, you take an axiom from gamma. You can remove it from the gamma. From gamma. You have a condition, yes. but you have to turn it to a predicate. Yeah. You put a ceiling. Around it, right? right. For totality, one of them, <laughs> right? And turn it into um, a predicate mm -hmm. implies yes, uh, psi. And the proof of this theorem. So this is by the of course, the, the, the euro way to use that is the other one, right? But implication to prove, I want to move that to the other side. Of course, you have to satisfy some technical conditions. Right. So but the point is that this theorem mm -hmm. is extremely useful. In practice, right? Okay, so I want to be able to prove it as a theorem in our interactive theorem prover for matching logic. Yes, eventually. Yeah. And you said before that in order to prove this, you have to do induction on the, on the proof derivation itself. Yes, right. So really, it's because it, it, it's really a property of the logic itself. Right. right. So that means that meta level will not be avoidable in the long term. We have to have a meta level. Of matching logic. So again, there are two ways. <laughs> One is to add everything we need as built in. For but example, we don't know when to stop. Well, but the, yeah, the, the problem is it's, it's endless. We don't know when to stop. So like we discussed in the applicative matching logic and the conservative extension theory. If you need source or a sorted parameter, so you have to types, know. dependent types. When to stop? <laughs> Who knows? Right. Yeah. The other approach is to go for the most general solution. <laughs> Which in our case, in our view, is the meta theory, the meta level. So we have a super simple logic at the core level, mm -hmm. like you mentioned logic, and now we have a meta level in which we can define in itself <laughs> yeah. everything we want. Right. right. It's going to be itself, a yeah. adding itself, of course, starting with itself and adding a lot more other things. But this is a deep embedding of the logic in itself. itself. Yes. And then, and then when we go at that level, then notations. Notations are on your level. level. They, they become ordinary, yes. same like anything else. Yes. But what is different with notations, I think, is that we can go down and back to the core level mm -hmm. and eliminate them if we want to. Yeah. Actually, the deduction theorem can also be eliminated. I, th I think the same thing for truth derivations, no, not just for notations. Mm -hmm. you, have, you are going to have this uh, up and down function, you know, uh, connect, connecting the object level and the meta level. Um, and I think um, we, we have to prove some sort of like a faithfulness theorem, right? Saying that it's, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether we want to do proof at the object level or at the meta level. I can imagine that in practice, what, what's going to happen is that 90% of the time we're going to stay in the object level because that's very familiar to us. Mm -hmm. It's only when certain cases like mm -hmm. notations or, you know, use a deduction theorem, we need to go to the meta level, mm -hmm. do some reasoning there, and then immediately we get to get back to the object level again. Yeah. So I think that's probably what's going to happen in the future. Do you think it could be possible that actually the interactive theorem proof will, will be implemented at the meta level? 
Mm-hmm. And you will stay on your number telephone. <laughs> but whenever you need to push results or to make claims about things at the core level, you can always bring them down from there. That could be also possible. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. We, we don't know yet. Yes. We yeah. see. Yes. So anyway, so all these things will go hand in hand, like figuring out notations with an interactive uh, prover and uh, with being able to prove complex theorems mm-hmm. about matching logic itself, like the reduction theorem. Yes. Like theorems about substitutions, binders, and so on. Right. But I think really the big motivation, or, you know, big vision that uh, I have is that hey, uh, should be formalized as matching logic theories and notations. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, 